disclaimer, a stereotype doesn't mean everyone, so don't be mad at me if your item gets a bad rap. Also, another disclaimer, this idea was not mine, this idea was inspired by Soundsmith's weapon stereotypes. Link in description. In today's video, we're going to be going over item stereotypes in VH3. We're going to be going in alphabetical order, and let's jump right into it. This item is the second least used item in the game, in my opinion, because the only time I've seen it used is with noobs that don't know what it is and end up dying horribly because they don't realize that it doesn't reduce fighting damage. Not many survivors bring bandages, and it's a shame. I mean, if you're not a team player, I understand, but having the ability to heal five people, it's pretty much since you're being a team player here. I mean, we're all fighting the vampire. I mean, it's not much, but you're still helping the team, and having that health there might be beneficial because if the health was not there, you they probably could not escape the vampire. It's not like flashy as like a med kit, morphine, or epic gun. Survivors that bring barricades, usually you just find them camping on the side of the map or just camping in some major spot that it's probably impossible to get to. Although good barricade survivors who actually help their team with barricades so they don't get instantly grabbed by the vampire once they get in. A new player who brings the bow thinks they'll destroy the vampire by headshotting it three times in a row and getting the MVP. Well, they end up just missing and never using it again. However, a good person using the bow can be the biggest nuisance your team has ever had. Because it can't, he can, or she can, destroy the vampire at any second. Just, you have to really practice if you want to be that person. So ever that bring the crucifix mainly want to help their team by making the vampire back off and think about when they want to strike. But sometimes they put him in embarrassingly bad spots that are totally ineffective, which end up being unused. New people bring in the defib kit. They try to be a team player, but they end up reviving a person who's non beneficial, opposed to someone who is beneficial. But good players can tell apart from the bad players and the good players, and they can just heal the good players and leave out the bad ones. But me saying this is kind of being me. farm points or just want to get the round over with and basically sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't work because the vampire's probably killed everyone by the time he's got his first test done. So I ever bring the drone just sit in the corner of the map for the whole entire game. I mean they think they're helping the team while also getting points. But, in fact, you're actually not helping the team by a lot. I mean, revealing the vampire location is pretty much, but you could be helping way more than that. You can be helping by damaging it. You can be helping by shooting it. You can pretty much be damaging it, and it would still be better than just marking where it is. New players think the energy drink is just a drink and it's not as cool as a bat or a pocket knife. Well, they think wrong. They don't know that you can go as fast as Sonic once you drink it. So what I'm saying is people who use it really appreciate the speed that it gives them and they can basically run around the whole entire map with lightning speed while regening stamina at an impressive rate. Survivors that bring the epi gun usually are amazing god tier players who hit the epi gun heal from across the map 
and you end up not being able to kill your target because he hit the epi gun. Or they just have an alternative to the med kit, which heals 50 instead of a full like 80 heal. The flare is one of the items that not many people bring, but when they do bring it, they just toss it in the vampire's face and just hope that the hunter takes care of the vampire and be like, oh, I helped. I helped a little bit. Survivors that bring the garlic usually overestimate their chances of holding off the vampire for very long times, and then eating it, and then going on a rampage, killing the vampire. Well, what, they, what really happens is that they try, but their garlic runs out before they can eat it, and then they die horribly. Although good survivors can time this perfectly, and then they can go on a rampage, but new players tend to try this out and then die. Make your survivors usually heal after they escape, so once you grab them again, you are going to be sure that they have no healing unless they brought something else. the same as survivors that bring medkits. They heal after they get grabbed and they're easy pickings. However, I don't see many survivors bringing morphine because they simply don't know that it actually regens health. And that's pretty powerful because you have a bigger escape time once you get grabbed because it regens while you get grabbed. Survivors that use the net are pretty sure that they'll hit the net and then pretty much kill the vampire or just want to help their team out in some way but still being able to fight back. These guys also overestimate how long you're stunned for so they're pretty easy to deal with if you time it correctly. Oh. Survivors that bring night vision goggles usually just camp in a corner all game and wait until the hunter gets grabbed and rush in, grab the gun, and kill the vampire in a heroic fashion. Well, that's what they'll think that'll happen. They'll just die horribly. However, some clueless people who wear the night vision goggles usually don't know what it does, and I think it's just for the counter of blackout, but they don't know the hidden stat of they can see the gun when it's dropped. Survivors that bring the pan usually don't want to fight, and they just, and when they get found, they just hold the pan in front of their face so they can't get grabbed. However, they don't realize that you can get grabbed from the back, so if you manage to get to their back, they're pretty easy to deal with. Survivors that bring the pepper spray are pretty clueless on what it does, and then they end up finding out and thinking it's completely worthless. Because, let's be honest, it's just a crappier version of the smoke bomb, but it's only useful if you're only battling the vampire. If you're the vampire, then it's completely garbage. You can throw that out the window. There isn't a clear stereotype for pocket knife survivors, so just judge them based on their level, because that's a clear indicator of playtime on vampire hunters. Slingshot is one of the least used items in my opinion because I don't really see it, this thing anywhere except for one match. However, if you can aim really well with it, you could probably lower the vampire itself down really low. So what I'm saying, these people usually don't know what it does or really amazing with it. Survivors that bring smoke bomb usually just throw it in front of the vampire and hope that it dies from the smoke and think that they can get an easy kill with their bat once they are spinning crazy. New players that bring the taser think they'll just stun the vampire, and then everyone will attack in at the same time, end up winning the game. Well, they don't realize you have to get in super close for it to actually do anything. Because you pretty much miss every single time if you're not in like 5 feet in front of the vampire. 
However, a good player with a taser can pretty much hit the taser every single time. So, if you're went in the server with one of those people, uh, make sure to stick right close to them. So when they hit that taser, it's time to strike.